please. Really? Uh, good job. There are at least two people here that can't pronounce it well, so. <laughs> this is, and uh, I need to thank these people that I talked this uh, topic uh, to them about. So, let me start with a question. Who here feels confident about their documentation of assessment plan? Raise your hand. <laughs> I, I'm more mean this part. I'm not following for that. Okay. Who <laughs> here is not sure? Stick in the pants. Okay. And who here thinks it's good enough? <laughs> Great. Okay. Okay. That's, that's probably the whole point of my talk. So when I got this very exciting topic and I was assigned to it, I thought that, okay, <laughs> I will have an evidence-based you know, topic that I have objective information, I will find, I will go to foam, I will find journals everywhere, and then I will get some take-on point, which is my favorite thing, and then design my presentation so that I tell you first what I'm going to tell you, then I tell you, and then I tell you what I told you. But this is the formula for any presentation. But I figured out there was no evidence for this. It's not objective, it's very subjective. There is no consensus. Not two people will agree on one documentation that is good or bad. So I don't know what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. And I don't know to tell you what I told you. So probably this is my take on point. <laughs> or maybe this. <laughs> like uh, on a chart. And I love this graphic, uh, this gif of uh, John Trafford that confused. I know it's a little bit old. An online word, it's like a matter of days or even hours. But this is for a few months back when it was very popular. I love it. So you can see this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is. And this chart, I love this chart. One of my patients. Abdominal pain for 15 months and associated with leaving my girlfriend's house and nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> anyway, this is what you do in the emergency room when you say this. Anyway, so I figured out, yeah. What I'm going to tell you really, I really thought about it. What is my take on point? What I want to tell you? This was a very important question. And I finally realized, and I got to this, that probably this will be my take on point that makes you a little bit more conscious when you are writing about your, when you're writing your assessment plan and more thinking about it. I don't have a definite answer for, but if it makes you more conscious and you think about it more, I think we are done with this presentation. To make you more conscious, what's the best way to make people conscious? Make, yes, make, makes people feel Supervised, being observed all the time. So that's what I did. I did a little bit of chart review. So if you have been working in the emergency room in Kings County in the last three months, there is a good chance that your assessment plan is here. And we will just with all the typos, without any change whatsoever. You see it. And then we'll discuss it, we'll criticize it, and then I'll call your name, you come here, and you defend yourself. <laughs> That's what we're going to have. <laughs> Like based on exam above, 
So you, by seeing this, you think it's not enough. You need to correlate it with uh, whatever it is. Yes, one, one more. Because one more. I, I think it's important to know whether, where this comes in the patient's chart. Because if you've got, uh, in the, the initial assessment of plan in your IPN, like I treat that as medical decision making. And if this yeah, is this is IPN. This is all assessment plan from IPN. Okay, if this, was, if this is medical decision making in IPN, then there's not enough. But if this is at the end when you're discharging someone, that's perfect for discharging someone in my opinion. Okay, thank you. If you've so already discussed point. it in the, with the medical decision making. Yeah, that's a good point. I will, uh, I will talk about it, that how much you can correlate this to what is the bob and you don't know about it or how much not. So, who is this? It's one of these people. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's my assessment plan for a patient I tried a few months back. So, thank you for the ones that said it's good. I <laughs>
poor person sitting in front of the computer trying to extract data to fill the sheet, the very big sheet in front of them and to conclude that like 50% of the presentation had altered mental status and they can't figure out from your note if there was any altered mental status or not. So think about it. And this manager. Okay? So these are why we do documents. We need to get documentation to a point that uh, fulfills all these requirements. And then we get to our medical decision making. If you search medical decision making, obviously you will see these chart or even this chart. I, can, I could go further and further with more complicated chart that I'm not going to talk about. But let me tell you that uh, this is what you, uh, the patient are built for, like how complicated your decision making is, which is very confusing thing. I will get into this, which your medical decision making is where you go from reporting what you found or what you heard from the patient to doctoring, I love that word, which means thinking, interpreting, and intervention. Okay? And to document what you think and why you think so. Like in my assessment of plan, as Dr. Zerbeck said, there was no why. I just said, based on my findings, no uh, concern for central cause. Although I did intermittent episodic, so that might explain a little bit. But, and you might uh, say that if there was nothing in the exam, you might not mention anything. But obviously, I didn't explain why. So, let's go to the next one. Read this. And it's case two because I excluded my own. <coughs> All the typos are there. <laughs> Untouched. <laughs>
a lot of people, you know, scroll right to the A and P. I think it's helpful to have that. A lot of people. I, I would guess, you know, most people just look at the assessment of that. Yeah. Um, in an effort not to repeat myself, I've been starting to say something like uh, patient with history as per above, and then right instead of going through all the things. But why do you need to write that? You know the history. Because there's no fever or cough, 
And you might also want to mention some interesting things that are zebras, right? Or not. But you might, you need to, the first two. But do you? So, read about this. Who is this? I love this. What do you think? Two comments? There's no justification why she got fluids after no quality was taking off of her in the last yeah. session. I love it. There's no justification for anything. Just chest pain that dissolved. <laughs> chest security for general ACS. And, interestingly, it's not one person. A lot of our nodes for chest pain is just like this. But is it good or bad? I will tell you <laughs> that it is... Fire. I'm not sure, really. I'm not yeah. sure of anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole point. Okay? So this is one of these people. Do you remember your notes? I just want to say, like, I, I don't think it's good or bad. It, it, it has one diagnosis, ACS. Okay, yeah. And I don't... That's probably so not great. Is that good? Yes. Yeah, that's good. Okay, good yeah. point. Yeah. So, Going back to when we had that lecture last year, I'm where going we there. had stop, stop. stop. <laughs> <laughs> so that next slide. Okay. Okay. Because okay. I have, I have, I have thoughts of what know, you're saying now versus what they said. Okay. okay. So next slide. Read this. This is not from a patient. Your patient. This I wrote myself for this presentation. So course, don't judge. According anybody. to the lawyers. Okay. Say that. This is one assessment plan compared to this one for exactly the same um, you know, plan and exactly the same way of like, thinking about the patient so everything medically is the same yeah. documentation is that red part is added should we do that or not? which one is better? when we had uh, the um, lawyers coming here last year we traditionally thought, and also read, I just mentioned that we need to mention the don't miss and we need to justify for any chest pain patient that is not a dissection, is not a PE, why we think that. But they said, if you mention PE, you have to do CTA. Right. If you don't do CTA and you mention PE, you are in trouble. Right. Because you are saying, I thought about PE, then the lawyer will ask you, so why, why you didn't read it out? Exactly. I would say, I used this score and that score. He said, no, what's the definite diagnosis? Why you took the risk yeah. for this patient? So, now it's the question. I want to put in the discussion. Which one? Really? <coughs> Go. The, those lawyers were in direct contradiction to the lawyers we had the year before that, too. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you guys remember that? that? Like, my intern year, we had lawyers saying to do this, list the differential, and the ones that came last year said don't do any of that. Just remember that's why you can't trust lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the So, what is the right way? That's the point. How is that? Wait, wait, everyone So, the takeaway that I personally got from when the lawyers were here last year was not that you, it's that you have to document objectively. So you can say in your assessment and plan, um, low risk heart score or Wells negative or something where it's an objective finding, a, a validated scoring. It's when you start saying subjective things, like you say, doubt PE or doubt dissection or appears to be musculoskeletal that you're boxing yourself in. And so you need to just stay very objective. So say, you know, tender to palpation over chest, low risk heart score, uh, you know, perk negative, and you're staying objective, and that will protect you more. But you're still kind of addressing some section? of those other. Yeah, I mean, you could say, you know, no, no, um, you know, equal pulses, um, other things that support the fact that you would have no dissection. But you know, when you bring it up, none of them are sensitive enough. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, right. yeah. but of course, of course, a lot of doctors do, a lot of ER doctors do like to say that less <coughs> likely, blah, 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 right. which is the same thing as saying doubt. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and I, I don't personally know. try I to figure that out, room, but I don't know if that's actually a good thing. Right, okay. So the one on the right is probably better, but you're, we're dealing with science and facts, and 
science. Lawyers can bring up whatever they want. It's not a scientific, there's no random controlled trials of what they bring on. So it's all what they can spin the trial to. So that's probably better, but. But not no, only for no lawyers, Dr. Holt. Yeah, I mean, separate, you and I talked to Lincoln. Separating what you're documenting from the discussion you have at the bedside with your attending it is important. The one on the right is the one you have at the bedside when you're talking to your attending and presenting this case. The one on the left seems sufficient to me for your documentation. You know, we're looking at these in isolation. We don't have the benefit of everyone above it, and, and I can go on and on about this, but the vast majority of the stuff above your assessment plan is crap. Okay? The reason the T-system is invented is for speed and for complexity. Um, this is the difference, in, in, as, as Reza said, this is the difference between being a scribe and being a doctor. Um, and so, yes, you know, um, as somebody mentioned about, you know, well, is it self-evident that uh, they were out of the TPA window, or is it self-evident that, that this was all documented before? Yes, it was, but the scribe could have done that. I want you to sit and write a couple of sentences that says, I took this piece of data, this piece of data, that's BS, I don't care about that. And I put it all together in my little doctor brain, and then I come out with a couple of sentences that makes it important that two years later, when you and I are reading this, are in an Uber car on the way to court, you <laughs> say, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, so that's really the important thing. All the H and stuff is important to put in there. But as you all know, the first time you use thesis, you're trying to get a five, and you're documenting, documenting, documenting. You document almost too much because it's so easy. So if I put a piece of paper in front of you and said, write down what this patient had with a pen, a pen, a pen, a piece of paper, you would, it would be important. You would only sort of spit out the important stuff, the stuff you talk to your attending about. You wouldn't sit there and bring some of these little small isolated things in. Um, so that's really I think, the crux. The one on the right is the discussion you're having at the bedside, and I and I agree that also you know, adding some scores that are that are um, you know objective, saying that the, you know perfect and wells and all these things are that's important. Um, but we're also realists, right? If you're you know, in the fours next year when you're in single coverage in a place and you're, you're frisking 45 patients in an eight hour shift, um, it's hard to write everything. And that's really the important thing is that the thing you write at the very end of your note, that assessment plan, um, really is what you leave the patient with. That's it, that's all that's left. So it's really important to kind of be as concise as you can, to really be, put your doctor hat on um, and not your stripe hat. Thank you, Dr. Hall. So, again, you pick your own. I don't know what's the answer, different answers. Which one is better? I really don't know. So, it sounds like this. If you write too much, somebody might criticize you. If you write too little, somebody might criticize you. So that's what I felt. But there is one thing at least you can do, and that's write a plan that addresses your differential diagnosis. If I write something, address it. If you don't write it, okay. You might not <laughs> talk about it. Okay, you can, uh, you can justify that I want it to be concise, I don't know what relevant information. But in your plan, you need to write about what you wrote before. If you wrote exertional chest pain in the last two days with sweating, you need to write about ruling out ACS with a good, you know, strong uh, justification. So, plan is obviously all you don't know about diagnosis, treatment, and disposition. You might need uh, to mention these three, okay, in your structured uh, note. So, read this. Five minutes left, right? Okay, 20 more seconds. Considering my time. And then compare it to this, which is for the same patient, attending note. Same condition. So compare these two. Again, I don't know. Really. Obviously, the attending is much more concise <coughs> and mentioning everything infectious metabolic cardiac etiologies. Right? Not mentioning diarrhea though, but maybe it's not that important. Weakness and you know non-specific symptoms includes that. I have a question really that about this metabolic cardio infectious etiologies or cardiovascular etiologies. Sometimes I write it. 
thinking that I'm covering the section PE and ECS. Is it good? I have this question. What do you think? Especially right then. Yeah, I mean, it's that tricky sort of walking the line between being specific and, and too vague. You want to be kind of generally a little bit vague in this. I mean, the one up top is, is pretty, pretty complete. Um, but, you know, seeing, first, can we all get rid of blue eyes? Yes, please. You never write that again, it'll be too soon. That's all. That's all. This is what I need to learn. <laughs> 